Welcome back. We are talking NFL primetime games Sunday night and Monday night football. If you haven't checked out the week four game preview video yet, it's on my page now. But the full version for every week four game is available only inside the Discord for pro members. You can access that along with a lot of other features via the Discord link that's in the description of this video on YouTube or if you're watching on TikTok, the link is in my bio. I do charge $50 for 90 days of pro membership, which gives you access to all the bets I'm personally making, but also bets made from my network of pro betting groups that I work with. I call these source plays. Also, there's a ton of educational stuff in there, betting tools, uh, all available for pro members. But enough with plugging the Discord. Let's get into these primetime games. Buffalo, Baltimore, currently looking at Ravens, minus 2.5 with a total of 46. This should be a good one. Two teams coming off games where they outperformed expectations. Ravens won, but the final score didn't really reflect how dominant their performance was. And we know Buffalo rolled on the Jags. Based on the three games played by both teams and the analytics that I think are most important when measuring a team's ability, I have the Bills and Ravens atop my power ratings as the two best teams in the league. I have Buffalo, 7.1 points better than a league average team, and I have the Ravens almost 6 points, actually it's 5.7 points better than a league average team. So that means I have Buffalo, 1.4 points better than Baltimore if the game was played on a neutral field, which it's not. It's in Baltimore, so I'll give Baltimore 1.5 points for home field advantage, which makes my number on this game pretty much a pick em. So based on my numbers, betting Baltimore plus 2.5 would have value. 2.5 points is pretty significant, too. Really, any difference over 1 point I consider really good. But now keep in mind here, these power rating numbers aren't based on my opinion, but rather a combination of 12 or 13 or 14, I think, different advanced metrics based on the three games played, and it's adjusted for strength of opponent. I only add in my opinion after when I adjust for home field advantage and injuries and then the situation. So my numbers point me in the direction of Buffalo from a basic situational handicapping perspective. This isn't a great spot for Buffalo. They're on a short week, having just played on Monday Night Football. They're on the road now, coming off a blowout win and now stepping up in competition to face a tougher opponent. It's a very interesting handicap here. You have a Bills team who looked really good this year so far, despite some injuries and new personnel. You have a Ravens team that's been slow to start, but showed signs of putting it all together last week. Uh, and the Ravens, what they want to do um, offensively is where Buffalo kind of struggles defensively. It looks like the Ravens found their identity last week, which... Um, it's always been line up in heavy personnel and run the ball up the middle between the tackles. But when Todd Munkin took over at offensive coordinator, he wanted to turn Baltimore into like a spread them out three wide receiver offense with big play potential and downfield passing. They tried to implement this offense and it was a big change that never really clicked. After the 0-2 start, they went into Dallas and did what they do best and run the ball. When you look at Buffalo and their defense, um, and the team that gave, had the most success moving the ball, it was Arizona. And how they did it was running the ball in between the tackles. Uh, and that was when Buffalo was fully healthy, or at least when they had the linebacker Bernard and Johnson at nickelback. Now Buffalo goes on the road to play a much better version of the same style of offense that gave them trouble. Um, Jags last week tried to attack the Bills on the perimeter, which was just stupid. Um can guarantee Harbaugh and the Ravens won't do that. They're going to definitely go inside and pound it up the middle on this Buffalo defense. There was sharp money bet on Baltimore last week versus Dallas, and I think we see the same sharp money come in on Baltimore again, and I think this number will probably get to three at some point. Now, I have Buffalo tied up in a teaser at plus eight and a half, so... Um, you know, Buffalo's been creating a lot of good fortune. Buffalo only one turnover on offense, uh, which was just a fumble loss. Their defense has six takeaways already, four INTs, two fumble recoveries for plus five and turnover differential. Good enough for second best uh, turnover differential in the league behind Green Bay at plus seven. I think this game's going to be decided by a single score and think the Ravens win and cover that two and a half. Both these teams combined are five and one to the over no opinion really on the total 
Uh, let's go to Monday Night Football here. We got the Titans and Dolphins. Basically, a pick-the-winner game uh, with a total of 37. Very tough game to price here because, uh, you know, Miami quarterback Skylar Thompson got hurt last week. Tim Boyle replaced him. But Miami signed veteran quarterback journeyman Tyler Huntley on Tuesday, and I think he's going to be named the starter. It's not confirmed, but Tyreek Hill... Uh, kind of hinted at Huntley being the guy this week. We probably won't get confirmation on this before the weekend. Uh, McDaniel probably wants to keep Tennessee guessing, so they have to prep uh, or prepare for any of the three quarterbacks for Miami. I'd approach this game as if Tyler Huntley was starting, but that doesn't make anything easier. Uh, I don't know how to rate Huntley or how to price Miami with him at quarterback. He's only been with the team a week. Not sure how much of the offense you can pick up in a single week. Um... This game is probably one I'll stay clear of. Uh, I do have Tennessee as a small favorite, but that's because I have Miami rated as the worst team in the league with either Skylar Thompson uh, or Tim Boyle at quarterback. But Titans aren't a team I trust. Um, they have the most giveaways in the league, five INTs, three fumbles lost, and they only have one takeaway on defense, which gives them the league worst negative seven in turnover differential. Uh, Titans have some QB uncertainty now, too. Earlier in the week, rumors of Mason Rudolph possibly replacing Will Levis were floating around. Those rumors have kind of died down a bit. If I had to pick a side, I think I'd actually go with Miami here. Going back to the injured player theory, uh, we might see max effort from the Dolphins to support their new teammate and new quarterback and right this ship. Dolphins stud offensive tackle Teron Armstead looks like he's going to miss. Honestly, this is a shitty Monday night football game that the league probably didn't expect to be this bad when they scheduled it before the season started. The later Monday night game is much better. Seahawks, Lions. Lions minus three and a half with a total of 46 and a half. I like the Lions here and think they're being extremely undervalued. I make Detroit favorites of three and a half, so there isn't really value based on my numbers, but... I can't help but think back to the season opener versus the Rams. Remember, this was a version of the Rams team that was healthy and projected to be very good. The Rams' regular season win total was being bet on the over all preseason. The Lions got up to minus 5.5 or minus 6 on some books for that game versus the Rams. And now Detroit at home versus Seahawks team. We're just seeing 3.5. I don't know. Seattle has looked good, no question. One of the few teams that are top 10 in total DVOA on offense and defense. I'm a big Mike McDonald fan. Love what he does defensively, but this start by Seattle is heavily aided by opponents faced. Week one, they get rookie quarterback Bo Nix on the road, making his first NFL start. Week two, they barely escape with an OT win against New England, and we know how limited that Patriots offense is. Then last week, they get the Dolphins, who travel cross-country with a combination of a backup quarterback and third-string quarterback, Tim Boyle. Regardless of what you think of Seattle, you have to believe this game here is their first real test. Going on the road on Monday Night Football to play a Lions offense that at least has an identity. Um, now, I think part of the reason we are seeing this number only three and a half is the Lions injuries. They're going to be without their center, Frank Ragnow. Uh, and have some defensive injuries as well with Alex Anzalone, safety Brian Branch. But I think they're going to play. Um, and on the other side with Seattle, they have injuries as well. And I think their final injury report is going to be worse than Detroit's. Seahawks are probably going to be without defensive starter Byron Murphy. He's their defensive tackle. Then both linebackers, Jerome Baker and Ochenna Nowusi. Um I think the Lions are going to be able to run the ball. And with a run game, this opens up at Goff. <clears throat> Plus, Seattle running back Kenneth Walker, the third. He's been limited at practice all week. Uh, Sam Laporta, tight end for the Lions. Looks like he's a true 50-50 to play or not. I think he's going to play, though. Dan Campbell's guys are tough. Any guys that are 50-50, I, I, I pretty much think they're going to play. Um, there is some conflicting service plays on this game, a popular service released Detroit minus three, and then another one came back on Seattle plus three and a half. I like Detroit here at minus three and a half. I made it an official best bet in the Discord. 
That's going to do it for week four primetime games. If you found any of this stuff helpful or informative and could give this video a like or a comment, that would be great. It gives me motivation to keep doing these videos. It takes me a lot of time editing them because I'm just not very good with that stuff. The more time I spend editing, um, the more time I am away from betting. So I go back and forth questioning if doing these videos is even worth it. Uh, so any support really does help me continue. And if you watch to the end, thank you. Until next time, good luck with your bets.